the Premier of New South Wales, Chris Menz. <laughs> Friends, they voted for our nurses, our teachers, and we will not let the people of this state down. First day of school today, Premier. It does a little bit to be the new kid on the block. We all have an interest in making sure that the NDIS is sustainable going forward. We've got a GP crisis in New South Wales. The average pay increase for teachers in New South Wales is 10%. We want to go from some of the worst salaries in the country to the best salaries in the country. Paramedics are warning the men's government their pay fight is going to get painful. The New South Wales state budget has just been handed down. Labor's first in 13 years. A $2.2 billion investment in housing. There are many dilapidated social housing sites right across the state that have fallen into disrepair. The $3,000 rebate for electric vehicle purchases will be scrapped. Crucially, it will start to pay down Liberal Party debt. That's a good document that will invest in the long-term future of this state. Chris Minns, welcome to 7.30. Thanks, Laura. The budget handed down this morning warns of severe challenges as the economy slows but yet it's forecasting a booming jobs market and rising property prices will help you return the budget to surplus. How worried are you about the downside risks to the economy in the year ahead? Well, look, obviously we're concerned about a rough landing when it comes to the interest rate rises impacting inflation. I think that the best estimate from the New South Wales Treasury, the Reserve Bank, the Commonwealth Treasury, is that they can manage those risks. But we are expecting demand to slow down in New South Wales. And as a result, unemployment will lift a little bit and we can expect inflation to drop as well. So that's a mixed bag. But at the end of the day, we think we're managing those challenges appropriately, particularly by paying down some debt to give us some headroom. Uh, the budget also relies heavily on coal royalties. Have you got a plan in the budget for how you're going to deal with the fact that they're going to inevitably decline? Well, look, that's the big challenge for New South Wales governments. We sold $55 billion worth of coal last year in New South Wales alone, but every single one of our trading partners is working on a way to decrease their reliance on fossil fuels. So the big challenge for us, and I think the entire state of New South Wales, is to fill that $55 billion export with other services and other goods. Part of that will be critical minerals. A big part of that will be what we produce in terms of services, and that's why we are heavily, heavily investing in education in New South Wales. Well, the budget's found funds on that point to finance the first really significant pay rise for teachers in a very long time. Uh, but there's not been a lot uh, for the hospital system. What are your ambitions for uh, increasing hospital funding in your first term in government? Look, a couple of things. Firstly, we've lifted the wages cap. So it used to be cut to, uh, capped at 2.5 during the COVID emergency, it was reduced to zero. We've lifted that. And for this year, it's been 4.5%. Again, below inflation, but significantly higher than the previous government. We're also investing in new nurses. So if we attract and retain those that are in the system at the moment with a salary increase, we believe we can recruit an additional 1,200 nurses and meet safe staffing levels in New South Wales public hospitals. That means one nurse for three patients in the emergency department, easing pressure on the hospital system and also making it a better place to work for those that we rely on to produce and deliver public health in the state. Well, housing spending is the budget centrepiece, um, but you're concentrating on housing infrastructure and only, I think, 5,000 houses over 16 years. Are you relying on the federal government to do the heavy lifting on actually building houses? We're always going to take help from the Commonwealth Government, particularly when it comes to houses. Part of that will be Landcom and the government coming up to the table and producing houses. But the truth of the matter is, and this is in relation to housing right across the country, if we're going to produce 75,000 houses completions every single year, we have to rely on the private sector. And that means delivering private capital into New South Wales. It means more urban infill. It means more apartments and units. My job is to create the infrastructure and get rid of the red tape that's blocking that kind of housing supply for the state. If we can get that rolling and at least come first on the east coast, we can ease some of the housing uh, challenges, particularly young people facing New South Wales. Is there capacity in the housing industry, in the building industry, to actually 
escalate the rate of housing construction. I mean, this is one of these sort of strange things where, despite the fact demand's up, uh, it seems like there are supply constraints. There are. I mean, that is true and we're honest about that. It's part of the reason why we're supportive of the Commonwealth Government's decision to lift immigration into New South Wales, notwithstanding the fact that we'll take uh, not the majority but the greatest number of inbound immigrants. A lot of those that labour coming into the state will be directed to the housing market and we need them. We need them to build houses and apartments. We believe we've got enough capacity for large scale infill development, so high rise apartments, particularly closer to the CBD. The challenge we have is that missing middle bit, so more three and four uh, storey walk up apartments in that middle ring of Sydney in particular. There's big supply constraints there and we've got a plan to work on that but that's our real challenge. Well, uh, the parlour state of the rental market is really the state's responsibility rather than the federal government's. Why is it that your government can't do more to help state renters? Look, I think the big challenge for us is supply and that is private capital into the market and removing red tape. But we've also brought in New South Wales' first rental commissioner. We're reversing the onus when it comes to the eviction of tenants in New South Wales. We're ensuring that you can only increase rents once per year. There are a range of changes that we think are important in terms of renters in the state. There are two million of them. Largely, they're young people and rents have increased 24% in the last 12 months. One thing we won't do, however, is a rent cap. And the main reason for that is if I announced a rent cap would be implemented in this state next Saturday, everybody who's a landlord who hadn't increased rents in the last 12 months will immediately do it. And that'll lead to an increase in uh, pressure on the housing market at exactly the wrong time. Well, rents were obviously uh, a big issue for National Cabinet uh, last month, but it seems like the NDIS will be a huge one in the next year or two, with the review currently going on into the scheme, clearly moving to push the pressure back on the states to deliver more services directly. Does your budget uh, delivered today make a provision for this? We've got an agreement with the Commonwealth Government when it comes to the NDIS and I'd say as part of that agreement we pay more to the Commonwealth for our contribution to the NDIS than we did when the state was responsible for those services. So it's a generous contribution. Look, there are a number of national agreements that need to be signed in the next 12 to 18 months. The big one for New South Wales is the no worse off guarantee as far as the GST carve up is concerned. We received over $3 billion from the Commonwealth in a two year period in no worse off payments. If that's about to be yanked because the predecessor government at the national level signed a deal with uh, Western Australia, then New South Wales can't sustain that. So we'll be around the table, but we'll be fighting on behalf of taxpayers in this state. and. Um, the deeper pockets of the Commonwealth are going to have to come to the table uh, to provide services for the people of this state. You're six months into your first term. Uh, you've had one ministerial scandal which you dealt with very quickly. The opposition's continuing to challenge the appointment of a, a, a bureaucrat. Given a rather sorry historical record for Labor in New South Wales in terms of perceptions of corruption. Do you believe there's enough oversight in place in your government at the senior levels uh, to reassure the public? Look, I do. Uh, we've got an independent, independent commission against corruption in this state. It's independently funded. There's more funding for integrity agencies in this budget than ever before in the history of New South Wales so they can conduct their own inquiries and don't have to beg the New South Wales government for funds. But look, the proof will be in the pudding. I'm honest enough to say that ultimately I'll have to go to the next election with our record over the last four years. Talk's cheap when it comes to these issues and I know that we've got a big um, barrier to climb. I'm determined to do it and I think we've got the team in place to get that done. Well, finally, you addressed um, a very big yes rally uh, at Redfern Park in Sydney on Sunday. The polls even today keep showing the yes vote declining. Why do you think this is and what needs to be done to change it? Well, I'm a lot more bullish about its prospects than a lot of people. I think that given the pressures in the economy, most people haven't switched on to the referendum. So I think it's all to fight for. I think there's a very, very strong case for constitutional change when it comes to the voice, mainly around the fact that this is a safe a reasonable change to our constitutional affairs. Nothing will impinge on the independence of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Nothing will interfere with our representative democracy. This is something that the people of New South Wales in particular can get behind. 
a reliable and reasonable constitutional change that will make the country better and fairer. Chris Minns, thanks so much for your time tonight. Thanks, Laura.